grew up in Cairo, small South Georgia town, population of about 8,000 when I was growing up, and the population still about 8,000 now, so it hasn't changed a whole lot. I had a really happy, fun childhood, you know, of course it was a much simpler time then, you know, um, but it was, I won't I, it's hard to say typical small town because Cairo is sort of an atypical small town, I think. Uh, I don't know if there's something in the water or what, but a lot of uh, unusual characters seem to come from the town. Um, uh, for, a, for a small town of 8,000 people, at one time in the 70s, we had like four guys playing in the NFL at the same time. Really? And two of them were on Super Bowl championship teams, wow. you know. So uh, Teresa Edwards, probably the most famous female basketball player ever, came out of Cairo. Uh, Jackie Robinson was born in Cairo. Really? Faye Dunaway was born right outside of Cairo. Man. You know, so a lot, of, a lot of people, yeah. So I don't know what it was, but it, so it's kind of a, a different little town, but I had a great time growing up. I had a small circle of really close friends. I didn't have like a whole lot of friends, but I had four best friends. And so the five of us, you know, if you saw one, you saw the other four, right. you know, we were inseparable. So I had really, really strong friendships, strong bonds. And um, um, I, I, I remember it being a pretty happy time, really. My mom and dad, both have pretty good singing voices. Yeah. Neither one ever did anything, you know, uh, pro professionally or had any kind of training or anything. But I remember as a small child or a little kid, you know, hearing my mom sing around the house when she'd be doing uh, housework and stuff and cleaning the house. And she had a really pretty voice, you know, singing at Perry Como songs right. and stuff like that. And um, but I never had any real training. But uh, they, you know, they would buy records. I mean, I remember the first records that I would listen to, they would buy, they had some Fats Domino and Elvis Presley and Booker T and the MGs and wow. stuff like that, you know. So it was pretty pretty cool stuff. So they there were hip some, parents. Yeah, fairly hip, I'd say. Yeah, uh -huh. back in then for sure. Yeah, and then, um, so you know, like a lot of other people of my generation, I started getting into some of the music of the early 60s. Uh, and then, of course, when the Beatles came along, I was like... <laughs> you know, it changed everything. Life would never be the same again. And so me and my very close-knit circle of friends in 1966 went to Atlanta, Georgia and saw the Beatles perform live. The next week after we got home from seeing our Beatles concert, we decided to, to form a band. My friend who played bass was left-handed, so McCartney was left-handed, so he said, well, I'll play bass because I'm left-handed. And You know, I'm like, well, I... John Lennon's my favorite, so I'll play rhythm and sing. And, <laughs> and then we just started listening to the records and picking out chords. And, and we were pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, but we had fun with it. I, I don't think I've learned a whole, <laughs> a whole lot more than what I learned the first month I started playing guitar. I still know three chords, and that's it. So, you know, eventually as I got, you know, into it more, I sort of put the guitar aside and focused more on just the singing. I still play a little bit sometimes, but more as a prop than anything else. Right. 